Chapter 4 Paget opened the door to find Max standing on the other side with a toolbox. She cocked her head to the side. You need to call before you knock. I might not have been home. Or, at the very least, I could have put on makeup and jeans. Makeup only enhances your natural beauty, which you have in abundance. He gave her a quick kiss on the cheek. Plus, I get to see those beautiful legs. Paget shook her head and decided to ignore the comment. What's with the toolbox? This? He hefted the box. I thought I'd wow you with my skills. How long has the bathroom tap been dripping like that? For as long as I've been here? Paget watched him make his way to the washroom. Come on in. Max grinned over his shoulder. Thanks. Paget followed him, watching as he opened the cabinet doors and started taking things out. Why doesn't the superintendent fix it? he asked, his voice muffled as he pulled out a handful of salon products. Sitting on the tub, Paget eyed her cut-off sweatpants and debated throwing them away. She probably should replace them with something more appropriate, but they had been comfortable since she had put on some weight. However, if she was going to have unexpected visitors like today, then she really needed to get rid of them. I live in a building with inexpensive rent. It's kind of an unwritten rule that nothing gets fixed. I learned that after I complained about the tap multiple times. Well, it's getting fixed today. Max turned the shut-off valve, then drained the water from the faucet. I watched some YouTube videos and got some advice from a guy at work. Piece of cake. You'll have to forgive me if that doesn't sound too confidence-inspiring, Paget said dryly. It'll be fine. It's either one of two problems. The first option is your filter is dirty and needs replacing. He unscrewed the end of the faucet, revealing a small grid-like covering. Grabbing a package out of his pocket, Max unwrapped the replacement and screwed it onto the faucet. He ducked under the sink and turned on the water. Even with the taps off, it began the steady drip again. Option two? Paget asked doubtfully. Is changing the cartridges. Max shut off the water again. This is a little bit more involved. Paget watched as he selected a screwdriver and carefully began by dismantling one of the handles on the faucet. He popped them off and then had to use an adjustable wrench to free the cartridge inside the handle. In moments it was out, and there was a fountain gushing water all over the sink, countertop, mirror, floor, and Max. Paget threw her bath towel on top of the sink. I thought you said the water was turned off. Um, let me check. He crouched under the sink again. What about now? The spray of water picked up force. No! Okay, then it has to be this way. The fountain resumed its original gushing pace. I don't think this is supposed to be like this. He did say there would be some water. Now there's a washer and a spring that have to come out. Then I have to insert the new ones and the new cartridge. Tighten it up, and if it's not this side, then we repeat with the other handle. Max looked around. Do you have some tweezers? I think you should call your plumber friend and get him over here to help. Paget rummaged in the medicine closet behind the mirror and tried to ignore the box of tampons staring them both in the face. She quickly grabbed the tweezers and slammed the mirror shut. Here! He's not exactly a plumber. Plus, he's away for the weekend. Max lifted the towel and began poking in the fountain of water with the tweezers. He told me, step by step, what needs to be done. So what can possibly go wrong? Well, my feet are getting wet. I don't think that's supposed to happen. Paget grabbed more towels and laid them on the floor and on the counter, hoping to soak up some of the water. She then grabbed some of the items that he had taken out of the cupboard and moved them to higher ground, namely the bathtub. If you have anything plugged in, you might want to unplug it, just as a safety precaution. Aha! Max grinned as he held up the spring and rubber washer. He frowned as he compared the cartridge and components to the ones in the package he had brought. I was sure that I had gotten the right one. Don't tell me. Even Paget could see that the spring and washer were a different size than what was in the package. I need to go to the hardware store for just a moment. Max grabbed the receipt and the two packages. I'll exchange these and be right back. What am I supposed to do in the meantime? She called after him as he left. Channel the water down the sink. Paget heard the door close after him. She stared at the gushing water. This is ridiculous. By the time he came back, all her towels were wet, and she was alternating between mopping up water with them and wringing them out. He still had a smile going, and the thought crossed her mind that this was sort of a rush for him, doing something that he admitted never having done before and having to problem-solve it. She only hoped her bathroom would survive the experience. 
I need something long and thin. Strong, too. Max looked around. Do you have any really thin knitting needles? Do I look like a woman who knits? Paget gave him a look that clearly communicated that she thought he was out of his mind. How had she let him start this mess? Why had he been so confident when it was clear that he had no idea what he was doing? What, what do you need it for? I need something to hold down the spring until I can insert the cartridge, Max explained. These tweezers are too fat. If I don't hold down the spring, the washer and it get displaced by the water pressure when I try to put in the cartridge. Wait a moment. Paget got a sudden idea. She ran to the kitchen and fumbled through the drawers, looking for the skewers that she had. Finding them, she brought one back to Max. Will this do? Perfect. He grabbed it and carefully did a sort of plumbing surgery on the tap. A minute later he used the wrench and the water mercifully stopped flowing. Max crouched in front of the sink. Fingers crossed. He turned on the water and nothing happened. They stared at the sink. It wasn't dripping steadily any more. It wasn't dripping at all. Tentatively Max turned one handle and the water flowed. He shut it off, then tried the other handle. Water flowed and shut off as it should. They looked at each other in amazement. It works! Max was ecstatic. There's no drip any more. Paget could hardly believe it. You fixed it. We fixed it, he held up the tweezers and skewer. It drove me crazy for months, but I couldn't afford a plumber, and now in an hour you fixed it. Her bathroom looked like a bomb had gone off, yet she didn't care. Paget gave Max a hug. Thank you. Admit it. For a moment you thought I'd totally screwed it up, Max said in her ear as he hugged her back. <laughs> Maybe, Paget allowed, smiling. Well, I might have thought the same thing. For a moment. Max let her go, and she realized they were both sopping wet. Paget pushed her hair at her face and tried to ignore the butterflies in her stomach. Um, I'm going to change into something dry. I have your shirt if you want it. I washed it. That would be good. He tightened the handle and began putting away the tools. Have you had breakfast yet? No, she replied. In her bedroom, Paget grabbed clothes at random from her closet. No, not that shirt. She threw it on the bed and grabbed another. I know a place that makes great omelets, Max said from the bathroom. Sounds good, she said as she shed her cut-offs and pulled on a pair of jeans. Paget hoped it wasn't an expensive place because her cash level was low and she didn't get paid until Friday. The good thing was, Max didn't strike her as an expensive type of guy. It's just a mom-and-pop place, but it's clean. I like the owners. They remember their customers. Nice, Paget shrugged into a shirt. She was going to have to use the disaster of a bathroom to do her hair and makeup. Grabbing Max's clean and folded Henley off the top of her clean clothes pile, Paget made her way to the washroom. Here. Thanks. Max had wrung out her towels and had them hanging over the shower rod and the side of the tub. He had put away everything back under the sink where it belonged. Here's your skewer. You didn't have to clean up. Not a big deal. He exchanged the skewer for the shirt and Paget left him to get changed. Thank you. Paget quickly shoved the stuff back in the drawers of the kitchen which she had rifled through to find the skewer and close them. Max came out wearing his Henley, which looked much better on him than on her, and carrying the toolbox. I'll be just a moment. In the bathroom, Paget swiped on some mascara and lip gloss. She ran a brush through her hair. It was all she really felt comfortable having time for, considering Max was waiting in the other room. Besides, it was only breakfast. The restaurant turned out to be a cramped little space that used to be a store along the old downtown area. It was brightly painted and cheery, but not much in the way of seating. Fortunately, someone vacated a table, and they were able to sit in the busy little eatery. The food smelled amazing. It only took seconds before the owner and his wife were at their table, greeting Max and introducing themselves to her in broken English. It was obvious Max was a favorite among their patrons. They promised to take good care of Paget and Max, leaving them to enjoy their drinks. They seem really nice. Paget sipped her tea and watched as the owner greeted a pregnant woman, kissing her on the cheek and grabbing her bags of groceries. He pointed in Max's direction, and she frowned as she spotted Max. Uh-oh, incoming. Max stood as she waded over, a stream of language following her as she said something to him. Max looked a little shocked and repeated a word before he hugged her. She was exotic, gorgeous, pregnant, and hugging Max. Paget felt a little trepidation. This is all your fault, the woman said as she sat down in Max's chair and rubbed her stomach. Hi, I'm Elle. Paget. Paget introduced herself politely. Nice to meet you. Two. Is the doctor sure? 
"'Wouldn't they have found that out before now?' Max asked as he purloined another chair from a table and sat down. "'They say the heartbeats were synced together, and he was hiding behind his brother during the first ultrasound. "'I'm going to be fat!' She eyed Paget and turned to Max. "'She's very pretty.' Max grinned. "'Yes, she is. You said his brother? Two boys? Don't remind me. One was all it was supposed to be.' L wagged a finger under Max's nose. Is she the reason you haven't been here recently? How long have you been dating her? Um, I'm right here, Paget weakly waved a hand. Max took Paget's hand in his. She is the reason I've been a bit busy to come by lately. Paget began to wonder if they were in one of those modern open relationship things. Was this Max's way of introducing her to his pregnant other girlfriend? If so, L seemed to be okay with it. Paget sure wasn't. Um, Max, how do you two know each other? Paget asked carefully. Elle is my sister-in-law, Max explained. She married my brother. Okay, I have to ask. Paget was relieved. She pointed to Elle's midsection. How is the baby Max's fault? Elle laughed. He introduced me to his brother, Noah. Those are my first nephews in there, Max grinned and gestured to Elle's midsection. And don't tell your brother. I just found out. The owner's wife came with three plates of food. She set one in front of each of them. Elf smiled at her. Thank you, Mama. The restaurant owner's wife smiled back and chatted something in her language, before continuing with her work behind the counter. Elf salted her eggs. Max used to work here during the winters. His brother Noah would come in to bother him, and Max introduced us. Noah has the bad habit of following me around, which is funny because he's older than I am. Max said as he spared some home fries. He was worried about you, Elle said as she sipped some coffee. Worried about you? Paget asked Max. The food here really was delicious. There was nothing to worry about. I was fine, Max gave Elle a look like he'd wish she wasn't saying quite so much. You were living in the streets. You still are, she shook her head. You're crazy. No one I have a spare room that you could use. Paget felt like she was only hearing half of the conversation. What? Living on the streets? Surely she meant that he just lived in a rough area of town. Besides, Ed and a few others that came and went in the park, Paget didn't know anyone who actually lived on the streets. Max really didn't seem like the type. He was the one who was giving them food and money. Max looked uncomfortable, and Elle dropped her fork. You haven't told her. Haven't told me what? Paget's voice may have been a little sharp. Gary hadn't told her a lot of things, and she did not need a repeat of that. We've just started dating. Max set down his cup of coffee. It hadn't come up just yet. Tell me what? Paget repeated sweetly, looking at Max, who looked daggers at Elle, who kept shifting her gaze between the two of them. Elle sighed. He's homeless, honey. Excuse me? Paget couldn't absorb the words. Surely not. Max used to come in here all the time when he was looking for work. We have a jobs board at the back. Anyhow, his brother would come in and check up on him. My parents owned the place, which is how I met Noah. She was sympathetic. Max is homeless. I thought he would have told you. You're the first girl he's brought here. Paget looked at Max in stunned silence. I was going to tell you. Just not quite yet. He gave Elle a tight look and reached for Paget's hand, which she pulled away. Paget? I think I need a moment, she looked at Elle. How much was the breakfast? It's covered, she said, pity in her eyes. I'm buying, Max said at the same time. Paget fumbled for her purse. This woman pitied her. This beautiful, pregnant woman who was married to Max's brother Noah and had a home with a spare room to offer. Of course she would pity Paget. She was the one who had been going out with Max, the homeless brother. Another step down from her post-Gary era. She felt so dumb. Did she have gullible stapled across her forehead? Or was it in a blazing neon sign? Excuse me. Paget, you don't need to go. I can explain. Max rose to his feet as Paget did. Paget walked away before she could start to cry. There was a time enough for that later. She could hear Max follow her, but she stared resolutely ahead. He circled around until he was right in front of Paget, walking backwards. Paget, please stop so we can talk about this, Max pleaded as Paget simply walked around him. I said I needed a moment. 
Padgett was surprised the words came out steady because she didn't feel steady at all. She wondered if it was too much to expect from a man, any man, that he be honest, completely and totally honest. Why, Max persisted, because I'm homeless? Padgett hurried her steps. Because you lied to me. She could see Max's frustration, yet it didn't make her feel any better. I didn't lie. I just chose not to tell you yet. Please get out of my way, Padgett said. The sidewalk had narrowed and there was a lot of people crowding it. Max grabbed her hand and kneeled in front of her. A few people cheered, thinking there was a proposal going on. Most just simply walked around the two, intent on going about their daily business. Paget, the key word is yet. I didn't tell you yet. I fully intended to. We've just started dating, and it's not exactly something I lead with. Hi, I'm Max, and I don't have a home. I sound like some dog from the pound. It usually turns people off. I know, because I've been doing this for a few years. Please let go of my hand, Paget whispered furiously, her face turning red. It was humiliating to have people staring at them this way, some blatantly eavesdropping. It's not a personal thing. I'm just saving the money that I would put in rent and utilities toward a debt that I have. Once it's paid off, I fully intend to find a place which is going to happen soon, he explained. Please, Paget. I believe we have something special here. Don't walk away from us. Paget shook her head and could feel hot tears well up behind her eyes. Max rose and tried to cup her face in his hands, but Paget jerked back, putting her hands up to ward him off and shakily said, Don't touch me. Gary had always tried that move with a smooth babe in it to try to convince her of whatever lie he was brewing, like when she found some other woman's panties in his suit jacket. Paget was never going to fall for that move again. Max dropped his hands, looking down at her with sad eyes. Paget, I don't want this to end. Please, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. Paget held up a hand to forestall any further talking from him. The crowd thinned at the crosswalk, and she took the opportunity to get by him. This time, he didn't follow. She spent an hour staring at the tap that they had just fixed that morning, willing it to drip, but it didn't. She spent the next hour crying in the shower, and then she had to reuse a sweatshirt to dry herself off with because she only had wet towels. Padgett didn't know what to think. She didn't appreciate not knowing and having Max's situation sprung on her in that sort of way. She didn't like being the last to know, because she had learned the hard way that being the last to know something usually meant it was bad news for her. How Paget wished he had told her sooner. Then again, he was probably right. She wouldn't have gone out with a homeless man. She wouldn't have trusted him. How often weren't people told that homeless people had mental health issues, or were on drugs or psychotic or something? Max seemed perfectly normal, but people didn't choose to live on the streets, did they? In retrospect, Paget could see some warning signs. He hadn't told her his address. He wasn't exactly the cleanliest, but that had improved. He'd been skimming free drinks from the college crew. He liked to do free activities. Paget liked free activities, too. She was poor, she reasoned. What if he did have some sort of mental health issue that caused him to like living on the streets? How do you date a homeless man? Finally, Paget sighed and got ready to go to work. It was going to be a really long day, and she wished she could afford to call in sick. Dix was already there when Paget got to the cafe. She set her purse under the counter and wrapped an apron around herself. What, no cheery greeting? Dix asked. Trouble in paradise? Text or call your boyfriend, Paget said suddenly. Tell him to come here. Why? She stacked paper cups. He's not my boyfriend. I just tell him to do things for me and he does. Like a minion. Well, tell him you want him at the cafe. Again, why? So I can ambush him, Paget smiled insincerely at a customer. Hi, how can I help you today? This sounds promising, Dick said as she whipped out her phone and began texting. When a customer at her till cleared his throat, she gave him a dirty look. I'm on break. She wasn't, but the ploy worked. The disgruntled customer joined Paget's line. She served three customers, and then Dix announced that she could help the next person in line, which happened to be her original customer. He muttered something about reporting her to her supervisor. Dix ignored the remark and served him his requested items. 
When the customers were gone, Dix began sorting through the fridge, looking for any out-of-date items. What did he do? You'll hear all about it when Adam comes, Paget said grimly. Adam is here. Adam puffed a little as he approached the counter. I came as fast as I could. You said it was an emergency. Suddenly furious, Paget grabbed Adam's shirt and hauled him as far across the counter as Girth would allow her to. She got right up in his face. Did you know? Whoa! Adam's eyes were real big in surprise. Know what? Dix leaned both elbows on the counter, propping her chin in her hand and watched fascinated. I don't think I've ever seen her this way, Adam. Better fess up and deal than to make her any more mad. Fess up and deal? Who says that? Adam gave her a strange look and tried to untangle Paget's fist from the collar of his shirt. I think I was parroting my parents, Dix shuddered. What is he supposed to know? Paget unclenched her teeth in her hands, allowing Adam to have his shirt back. Did you know about Max's situation? Adam froze from straightening out his shirt. He tried to be innocent. What situation? The one where he doesn't have a house, or an apartment, or a room. Paget leaned across the counter, and Adam backed away. The situation where he lives out of a cardboard box. Oh, that situation, Adam said weakly. What? asked Dix. Seriously? Max is homeless? You knew, Paget accused, pointing a finger at him. I told you I met him on Elm Street, he shrugged. I didn't think it would matter. Oh, it matters, Dix and Paget exclaimed at the same time. Max is a nice guy, Adam protested. He doesn't do drugs. He barely drinks. He's kind, and he bothered to be my friend when he didn't have to. He's currently homeless. So what? When I get out of school, I'm going to have debts to pay, too. He's paying back this loan, and he's got a plan to stay on track. He'll be done before the year is over. I thought you liked him. I did. I do, Paget sighed. I just wish you would have told me. Would you have gone out with him? Adam asked. I don't know, she said. Probably not, if she was being truthful to herself. Who was she kidding? No, I wouldn't have. When you're dating someone, you expect that they'll be employed in it for place of residence. You would have missed out on a really great guy, Adam pointed out. And you wonder why I thought Adam was gay, Dix raised an eyebrow at Paget. Adam looked at her in shock. You thought I was gay? You keep talking Max up like he's the greatest thing, Dix said dryly. He's my friend, Adam said defensively. I'm being his wingman. His wing is broken. He's homeless. There's no making that truth soar like an eagle. Dix shook her head. Give it up, Robin. Your Batman is broke, and Alfred is on the unemployment line. I don't like your analogies, Adam said. I don't care, Paget inserted. The important thing is that both you and Max didn't tell me. I had to learn the truth from someone else, which hurts because I thought we were friends. I'm so sorry, Paget, Adam apologized. You're right, I should have been a better friend and I should have told you. Paget buried her head in her hands and leaned on the counter. I don't know what to do. Are you going to see him again? Dix asked. I don't know. I don't think so. Did he grovel? Dix questioned. Really, she asked too many questions, thought Paget. I usually base my choice on how long I punish a boyfriend on how well he grovels. Adam laid a hand on Paget's arm in sympathy. I honestly think you and Max were made for each other. I never would have introduced you otherwise. I feel like he lied to me. I know he says he just omitted the truth and had every intention of telling me, but... Paget shook her head. I won't be in a relationship with someone who isn't telling me the truth. Adam nodded. I'm sorry, Paget. I'm sorry, too. I also apologize for grabbing you. It was uncalled for. Paget gestured to the menu. Have anything you like, on me. No, I can't do that. I know you're as broke as I am. He gave a smile. I'll still take my frothy coffee and Cinnabon, but I will pay for it. Dix pretended not to flirt with Adam for the next couple of hours while she and Paget took care of customers. Finally, they reached the end of their shift and began closing. Paget leaned on the broom and asked, Aren't you ever worried? that one of the customers like that guy today will actually report you to the manager? Who would they report me to? You'll notice our boss, Absent Allen, is gone yet again. Besides, 
Most customers never actually complain to management. They just say they're going to. Dix finished the cash drawer accounting and put the money in the safe. As long as the till balances, the place is clean, and no one is really busting Alan about a worker, all is good in his life. He's my cousin. He gave me a job as a favor to my mother. He likes your mom that much? Patchett asked. No, he thinks she's a nut. I told him if he didn't give me a job with enough hours, I'd be homeless and starving artist. When my mom asked me why, I'd tell her it was Alan's fault for not hiring me. She'd camp on his doorstep and make his life misery. Dix folded up her apron. Which is why I'm now employed here. You really need to learn how to manipulate people. That is a gift I do not possess. Paget didn't want to possess that gift. She folded her apron and stacked it with Dix's under the counter. When she looked up, there was Max waiting by the door. Paget felt a moment of pain before she walked over and pointed to the clothes sign hanging there. I know, Max said to the glass door. I want to walk you home. We don't have to talk. I just want to make sure you get home safe. That's all. Paget pulled down the blind, shutting him out. Do you want to split a cab and come to my place? Dix asked quietly. Do you have ice cream? And Netflix? Deal. Paget leaned on the counter, burying her head in her hands and concentrating on breathing evenly until the cab came. I told Elle, no deal, Nora snorted. She's out of her mind if she wants to name the babies Colton and Corbin. Max grabbed at the ball, dribbling it across the court. He held out a hand to try and hold off Noah as he sprinted for the end, making a one-handed shot that missed the basket. Noah grabbed the basketball off the bounce. You are off your game. Max quickly wiped the sweat out of his eyes. He waited for Noah to make a move, but his brother just stood there, chest heaving from the workout they had been putting each other through. Max sighed. Noah wasn't going to budge until he talked to him. Maybe. Noah grunted, I'm up by twenty. You're not paying attention. Twenty? Max grimaced. Are you sure about that? Spill it already, Noah said as he went to the edge of the park and grabbed his water bottle. Max hesitated but decided to confide in Noah. Noah had experience with trying to win over a woman. He was married to Elle, one of Max's friends, and it hadn't been a smooth courtship, but the couple were completely happy now. There's a woman. This is a first, Noah remarked mildly. A woman having you in knots when usually it's the other way around. She's special. How special? Noah cocked an eyebrow. He was slightly amused to see Max this way. Knock the breath out of you the first time you see her, ringworthy, future-sharing, Max reflected. She's kind, she's accomplished, she's sweet. That is special. Noah studied Max. You're in love with her. That's not the problem, Max said ruefully. What is? She's mad at me because she thinks I lied to her, Max admitted. He wiped his face with his shirt, then took the ball from Noah. He tossed it from hand to hand, feeling fidgety. Did you? Noah raised an eyebrow. Lying to a woman was a sure way to get on their short list. Max gave Noah an unamused look. No. Noah waited patiently. There was more to this story than what Max was telling. I may have omitted an important detail about my living situation, Max allowed. She didn't know you've been living at the men's shelter again, Noah said flatly. He hated that his brother refused to live in a regular apartment or a house. Max had some idea about paying off a debt he had before paying out for rent or utilities. The shelter is better than the truck. At least I can get regular showers there. Max threw the ball, and it sunk through the basket perfectly. He watched it bounce across the tarmac. Women tend to appreciate the fact that a man has a place of residence, a house, a condo, an apartment. It makes them feel like he can provide for them, Noah gently said. It may have been a bit of a shock to her. I want her back, Max groused. And I would suggest groveling long and hard, preferably with gifts, Noah retied his sneaker. It should explain why you're living in the shelter or out of your truck. Maybe she'll understand. And if she doesn't? Then it wasn't meant to be. Noah laid a hand on Max's shoulder. Look, I don't agree with what you're doing because I think you could at least take care of yourself in a cheap apartment or let me pay for one. And while I don't agree with the how, I still understand why you are doing it, giving the money you earned to those kids. You know, if you want me to up my annual donation to your fund, I will. 
Max shook his head. You have Elle now, and two kids on the way. I'm not going to ask you to do that. I'm offering, Noah insisted. I'm turning you down, Max sighed. Most of the beneficiaries have passed away. There's only a couple left. Once I catch up on the bills, I'll be okay. I almost wish I had met Paget a year from now, when it's all finished. No, you don't, Noah admonished him. Then she couldn't understand the sacrifice that you've done as well as she can by seeing you go through it. Max nodded morosely. Oh, you're going to have to tell her about everything. I don't want to. At Noah's inquiring look, he clarified, I don't want her to know I'm a Ramsley. Not yet. We just started dating, and I just want to keep it to myself for a little longer. What's wrong with being a Ramsley? Noah asked, confused and a little offended. All the other girls I used to date. They knew I was a Ramsley. They were in it for the name, the cash, the adventure. Not one of them knew me, which is why it was easy to leave them. Max got up and retrieved the ball. He tossed it back and forth with his hands. Paget knows me. I'm not part of the Ramsley Empire anymore. I'm just a guy making it on my own. I like that. Right now, she likes that. She'll admire you all the more for it. Noah didn't really see the problem. Max shrugged. She's important. <laughs> you fell hard, Noah observed. I don't think I could even describe it. Life is just better when she's there. Then maybe you'd better think hard about getting an apartment or someplace to live. Noah grabbed the ball out of Max's hands, unless you want to convince her to let you move into her place. Noah took his shot, and it floated through the basket perfectly. He retrieved it and tossed the ball to Max. Not yet. We aren't at that point. Max took his shot, and it bounced off the rim. Excuse me? Noah laughed as he grabbed the ball. This from the playboy who used to live with a new honey each week? I wasn't that bad, Max protested. He ran a hand through his hair in frustration. I want to do things right with Paget. When do I get to meet her? Noah asked. The way you are with women? Hopefully never, Max joked, grabbing the ball from Noah and sprinting to take a shot. It went wide. He shook his head. She really is affecting my game. You better get her back. Otherwise, I'm going to have no one worth practicing with, Noah observed dryly. Max sent her flowers. He sent her candy. He sent her cards. He sent a trio of men in suits with two violins and a cello to serenade her. She slammed the door on them. Max placed an ad on the radio apologizing. Her radio at the college. She was incredibly embarrassed. She put her head on the desk and covered it with her hands. The girl swooned at how romantic her boyfriend was. The guys glared because they didn't want to go through the same lengths to keep their girls. He sent her a wrapped box, which, out of curiosity, she had to open. It was a diamond necklace by the jewelry brand Paget. He couldn't afford a place to live, but he bought her one of the most expensive brands of jewelry in the world. Paget brought it to Elle at the diner and told her to tell Max to stop it. She didn't give the pregnant woman a chance to respond and promptly left. He sent her a gourmet food package. She gave it to Ed. He sent a bottle of Chateau Margot. She pawned it and gave the money to Ed. Every time he came to the cafe, she let Dix handle him and went to the ladies' room until he left. She wondered if she was going to have to take out a restraining order. She didn't want to. He kept apologizing, and she kept avoiding him. Finally, he left a note taped to her door. Paget sighed and unfolded it to see his now familiar scrawl. Paget, I'm sorry I didn't tell you. I did intend to, but I wanted to wait because I was afraid that you would reject me. I have a debt that I owe to some amazing people who are having a hard time in life, and I am trying to pay it off before I pay for any luxuries for myself, including a place to live. It might seem silly, but it's important to me. The money is almost repaid. Afterward, I fully intend to go back to living inside like a normal person. I'm sorry that you had to go through all of this. You're an amazing, beautiful, talented, sweet woman. I never meant to make you unhappy. I promise I'll leave you alone. Max. Paget shut the door, went back to bed, and burst into tears. <laughs>